Now that episode, uh, oh, we're still talking about Black Mirror. Oh, I say still, but you know, we talk about Black Mirror quite a lot. So we're talking about season two, episode three, was it? The one where he's got the recording device. No, I thought it was season one, episode three. Oh, is it season one, episode yeah. three? Uh, so yeah, he's got a recording device that, well, everyone has, that records everything that they see and hear. Yeah, you just live stream to yourself, don't you? Yeah, the sex scene, that's really quite haunting. Yeah, and then just works out his sleep his wife's No, sleep. I mean like the fact that when him and his wife go home and have sex, they watch recordings of when they were first dating and right. having sex to help get them off so because their sex has become mundane. But, you know, it's a really, really interesting if if that technology existed, people would use it like that, wouldn't they? Least of their problems by the end of that episode. Yeah, very true. The rights to that episode were purchased by um Robert Downey Jr. Oh, he wants to make a film about that one, yeah. doesn't he? We'll see whether or not that happens. If it does happen, or if it's going to happen, you'll hear about it in this show, which is The Snooze Button, where we cover TV, movie and pop culture. So if you like that sort of thing, stick around. Right, welcome to The Snooze Button, where we basically bring you about 35 minutes worth of news and then we hit The Snooze Button and... Uh, well, give you a little bit more. <laughs> let's let's crack on. You went and saw Jumanji the other day, Ross. Yep. How was that? It's brilliant. Did you really enjoy brilliant. it? Yeah, it was really good fun. You say, of course, it was brilliant because it's got the rock in it, but... But it was really good fun. Yeah? Yeah. Mate, well, San Andreas is a good film. Baywatch is a good film. Baywatch so, is not so a good Jumanji's film. So Jumanji's actually a good film. Baywatch is not a good film. I'll tell you what, that's in the news later on, so we'll cover that in a bit. It's not a good film. Is um, it? It's fun. It's not funny, great. Uh, right, look, Jumanji... Welcome to the Jungle it has once again once again topped the uh, the box office this week. Worldwide it's currently topping 667.8 million. Do you think it will make the billion club? Um can it? Don't know. It's probably dependent on China, isn't it? Have <laughs> you got um more news about China and films not performing particularly well in China? Do you mean like Star Wars? Yeah. We did that last week, yeah. Did you? Aye. So is it not just Star Wars then? Yeah, no, that's the all I knew. Okay, fair enough. So, so in reaction to that film not doing very well, 92% of the cinemas that were showing it have stopped showing it as well. I thought it was Disney that pulled it as well. Is it Disney that's yeah. pulled it? Right, okay, fair enough. See, I'm quite happy to go. I'm going to I want to go and watch it again. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, there's a bit more about Star Wars in the news later on as well, so we'll crack on. And yeah, uh, Jumanji's we'll really good, though. Go and watch it. Yeah? Yeah. Hopefully, I mean... In I China... Three <laughs> times in China, so three that times. it makes a billion dollars. I mean, it's only got to do another two hundred and twenty odd million, and it'll break a billion. It'd that, be the f- it'd, it'd be, the be first mental one if it does. Do you reckon? Because it's it shouldn't be the sort of film that does that. But it's got the rock in it, and and oh, as much as I joke about, he's like he's hot shit in Hollywood. Isn't yeah, he? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's one like of the, the highest. The, the day that him and Chris stars. Pratt make a movie together, it's all over. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, you, you talk about whether or not the industry is based on star charisma or anything. He, he is the epitome of, of that statement, isn't he? And his character is the fact that he is just the rock. Yeah. That's the whole the whole gag of the body swap is that he is just being the rock in how the rock is in every film. Right. And it's completely the opposite of how the person is in real life. Yeah, sure. Well, it's just playing against like, type. He just does this thing called smouldering. Into, one of his special moves is smouldering intensity and he stares into the into infinity. Right. And everyone, everyone around him just gets weak at the knees. <laughs> it's so funny. It's brilliant. Okay. It's still being shown at our local cinema. Might well go and give it a look. It's quite a bit long. Tw- 10, min- 10, 15 minutes too long. Right, okay. It's really good fun. Was it crowded? No, because it was Thursday. Uh, it's okay. normal price. Well, it's the middle tier, isn't it? Normal weekday Tuesday, price. Tuesday, Wednesday's like cheap. Do they do Orange Wednesday or is it just Meerkat movies? It's just Meerkat now. So Tuesday, Wednesday, buy one, get one free. And then Thursday, it's like eight quid a ticket. And then right. it's £10 on the weekend, isn't it? There you go. Anyone right. listening in London is like, you lucky bastards. <laughs> yeah, this is very true. <laughs> anyway, Avengers Infinity War. Would you be interested in an official synopsis? No. No. <laughs> 
going to have to read it to you anyway well, now. But why? No, I don't. I genuinely don't want to know. Why really? would I want to know? Why, why wouldn't you want to know? Because I'm just going to go and watch the film when it comes out. Superheroes are going to fight supervillains. You know, I don't basically. know how more on board you need to be that you need to know <laughs> any more about this film. There like, is how one there. Movie? We're, We're like look. 12 movies in at this point. You're invested. <laughs> You're going to see this film. At no point do you need to know the synopsis of it. Oh dear. Okay, fair enough. Right, so there's an official synopsis out there on the internet if you want to go and read it. Uh, one interesting thing that did come out this week, there's going to be an action sequence like the um, airport fight scene yeah. in Civil War, but it's going to involve 40 characters. Yep. Wow. Well, because now Deadpool and Wolverine are just going to turn up <laughs> at some point. It's going to be like Ready Player One. Just yeah. sprites and characters and stuff dropping. No, it's not. I'm sure it's they're not going to drop in Wolverine and Deadpool. And, and that. No, I know, no, but, not, but, but you know. people are jizzing about that thought right yeah. this minute. Yeah, it's very true. Hugh Jackman's been talking about being Wolverine again. We mentioned that last week. But really? yeah. Yeah, which I'm kind of against, but hey. April 27th, we're going to get the movie. That's like a week late. Uh, no, a week before it's released in America for, for some reason. Anyway, that's really not far away. Have you seen this weird bloody trailer for um, the Crocodile Dundee third sequel? No, fuck off. <laughs> Okay, so Danny. I Mc... didn't even know he was still alive. Mate. Well, yeah, Paul Hogan's kicking around, but do you know who Danny McBride is? Um, he was the star of Trailer Park Boys. No, and uh, it was in a TV show called Vice Principals just recently. Kind of chubby guy with a mullet, classically. Like, oh yeah, I do know comedy who guy. Mean. Yeah, yeah. So it's him. Plays he... redneck. Curly, yeah, that's curly right. fringe. And yeah, that's the one. And a yeah. mullet. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll link this on our Facebook page, but he's done a trailer for a Crocodile Dundee third sequel. Um, or is it a reboot? Which, no, it's... <laughs> basically, he's playing Brian Dundee. <laughs> so he's, he's Crocodile D- Dundee's kind of half-American son. With right. A, complete with weird accent. However, the idea on the street is that he's it's a prank. That this movie isn't actually happening. Right. And at some point, he's just going to come on and you know, promote something else and say, ha, got ya. Mainly because the American film board, what are they called? Screen Australia, they don't even know it exists. And all the, on the website for the for the movie, all of the, like, shoot shots seem to be from the trailer shoot. Stuff like that. Right. So, what do you think at home? Is it a real thing? Is it not? Go and have a look. It's on our Facebook page. I laughed. It was funny. Anyway, Steven Spielberg and Ernest Klein have been talking about the movie, Ready Player One. Yep. Because that's coming very soon. There's a nice new featurette out, which is kind of like a, a bit of an extended trailer. It's got a few new things in it, which is quite yeah. nice. You may not want to watch it. Why not? But it's not spoilery. I'm just saying that you tend to avoid No, no, trailers. I don't mind Ready Player One no? because I've read the book. Right, okay. There's nothing they can do. There are going to be different things going on in the film, aren't they? I think it's going to yeah, be but different I, it's enough. Not, they're not gonna, they can't ruin anything, can they? I've read the synopsis. <laughs> But yeah, um, it's quite nice to hear that Ernest Klein has been on board, like advising Steven Spielberg and vice versa. Yeah, I wonder how much he listens though. Well, I wonder how much of the old video game stuff's going to be in it. I don't think I it's going to be gonna a lot of vi- old I'm gonna, stuff. I think they're going to bring the video game stuff forward more. Although Spielberg talks in the in this thing about um, you know in between the bits where him and Ernest Klein are kind of sucking each other off, there's uh, <laughs> some actual nice nuggets of information where he, Spielberg talks about when he read the book and how amazing it was to have like a flash forward in time at the same time as a flash back in time. Now you could argue that you can do that without flashing too far back in time. And you can just flat back, flash back like you've seen with a lot of characters in and stuff in the trailers where, you know, we're looking at like 80s and 90s yeah, not, stuff. It goes further back than you than a lot of people realise or remember that book because yeah. it talks a lot about old text adventures and old 8-bit games and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And that's just not... I don't think the target audience is there for that. No. And then you see the trailers and it's got classic characters from all the eras and stuff. Like, uh, Yeah, but there's no like... There's stuff in Ready Player One that's a decade before Street Fighter 2. Yeah. Probably that'll be the stuff that goes away. Well, there's stuff that's more than a decade before Street Fighter 2. Yeah, Star Wars, for instance. Oh, yeah, and, and, and Lepidon and uh, yeah, Mecha Godzilla and stuff like that. But what's really heavy in that book is the video game stuff. Right. It isn't a, as much about movies and stuff. It's, yeah, I know It is what a mean, book yeah. about video games. First. Yeah, true. True. And a lot of the video games are really, really old. Yeah. Really old. Not just retro, but stuff that is 
borderline unplayable now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You like, can only play it like if you've I'm, got an Atari. I'm nearly 40 this year, and I think the Atari 2600 looks like a piece of shit, and all the games are ass on it. <laughs> like, I don't have any fondness for games that bad. Right. Because of what, the, my Not even Missile Command or Dig Dug. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you might be interested in the fact that uh, there's a sequel book on the way. Yeah, that's that'd be interesting. Yeah. Cause, because it has the potential to be the Matrix, doesn't it? Because they've got control of uh, the Oasis now. Right. By the end of the book. Do you think they'll so go too far? The, and yeah. Yeah. That's an well, interesting the idea. The problem is... Ready Player One ends and you go, oh, a sequel to this would be good. In the same way that when The Matrix ends, they didn't have a choice with The Matrix. It ended in such a way that they just had to make a sequel. Yeah. And they because they it. did some incredible world building and ended it on a really high. And you just went, there's still so much to do. Yeah, yeah. And then they ruined it. Yeah. I wonder if those films hold up. I might go back and watch all three in a row. I saw the second one again just recently. and The problem is that last scene just ruins that movie, doesn't it? Which, which, which is the last the, scene? The, the fight? No, the guy, <laughs> the god guy explaining how many times oh, yeah. they've rebooted The Matrix. And you're just like, Yeah, true. See, the Agent Smith fight always gets really bad press. I really enjoy it. What, the one where there's loads of them? Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks all right. It, you can tell it's a lot of CGI, and, and well, I think it's all CGI, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's quite fun. I enjoyed it. Anyway, it's uh, the third one that kills me. Is it the third film? Is just trash. Anything that is in the anything in the real world, all of Which the bits that are in the real world. Yeah, the real world, isn't absolutely. It? All the oh, love and. Peace, bloody no. They have love. this weird rave. Yeah, that's the, exactly what one, I'm about they? to say. Yeah, the love and togetherness rave at the beginning and stuff. And it's just like, fuck off. Just no. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, they're not all high. They haven't got the sun. They haven't got. Definitely haven't got any MDMA. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real shame. You know, they should have just. Um, they should have just made live action versions of the Renaissance, like the, the prequel story from, the Animatrix. Yeah. And that would have been amazing. It's Terminator though, isn't it? I suppose, to a degree. Anywho, we've gotten... Way off, off track. Yeah, we get have. back on the news, Chris, because we're running out of time. Um, Gary Oldman, he's going to get an Oscar by the looks of it, isn't he? Yeah, it's a dead set, that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's about time, isn't it? Has he never had one? He's never had one. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. The guy is a, a human chameleon, and you think about the parts that he's had in the past, and, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula... The the bad guy in or Leon, the bad guy in um Fifth Element, you know, it's taken this long. Mate, he's fucking brilliant in Batman. You forget he's in Batman. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's Gordon, isn't he? But yeah. um he uh, it's a bit like Alex Guinness. It, these these great character actors have to wait for their Oscar, don't they? Yeah. Because not only they have to they have to get an incredible script as well as embody a character to get it. Yeah, true. But uh, yeah, I want to. I really want to see Darkest Hour. It's getting some really, really good reviews. Yeah. So uh, yeah, five stars all round. So that's out now, I think. If I'm not mistaken. On the other side of the coin to this, the Razzies just named their first, the five worst movies of 2017. Transformers. Transformers. A Age of Extinction. Any more? Um, you want to guess that? Ooh. Uh, um, JLA. No. Didn't make it on the list. No. Mate. I don't know. Okay. Oh, Geostorm. No, it's not no. on there either. So Transformers is at number five. The Mummy's at number four. Oh, I forgot about that. Fifty Shades Darker is at number three. The Emoji Movie at number two. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And number well. one, Baywatch. Oh, it's not that bad. That's controversial, isn't it? Because it isn't that bad. Well, I thought it was that bad because I put it in my worst films of last year. Like, but I know you like it, for instance. And I know I've spoken to other people that enjoy it. Oh, it's not it. brilliant. It's just fun. Yeah. It's just bollocks. It's designed to be bollocks, isn't it? That's the thing. And it succeeded. <laughs> it's not pretending to be something it isn't either, is it? No, I guess not. Not like Transformers. That really wanted to be the best film ever. Yeah. I know what you mean. Anywho, yeah, so whether or not you agree with that, the Razzies will all be announced at some point or another. We'll have a laugh with those at some point. Um... You watch The Crown, don't you, Ross? Yeah, I haven't started season two. Oh, okay. So Paul Bettany's going to be uh, Prince Philip. Oh, I thought Matt Smith said he was going to stay on. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, so 
Paul Bettany is going to be Prince Philip and Helena Bonham Carter is going to be Princess Margaret. Does does that mean that two of them are leaving and they're being replaced? These are parts that are being Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recast. I think they're going on... Not. I think they are moving the time forward, so they're recasting middle-aged actors. Right. Yeah. That makes Instead sense. Of younger, younger actors. There you go. That does make sense. So, yeah. Which is weird because Helen Bonham Carter has, has actually played the mother of the character she's playing. Has she? Because she plays the Queen Mum in the King's Speech, doesn't she? Ah, so she, she does. She plays their mother in the King's Speech. So she does. Interesting. And there you go. Is it good, The Crown? Yes, yeah, good. I yeah. don't know how accurate it is, but it's just quite good fun. Fair enough. It makes you realise that as, although they have all the luxury of they could ever want it's it's pretty much a job that no nobody would want right because of all the attention it's just and relentless right. yeah but you're always working right like the queen works like everything she's doing is her job i suppose yeah. every every waking moment you mean yeah pretty much everything like she's never not the queen right because the great thing with the crown is she obviously starts and she's not the queen right and um because of how things ha she literally got on a plane and wasn't queen and got off a plane and was the queen and it was just like so do you think the fo is the show like literally so like but also because it was like 60 years ago when how how long has the queen been on the throne for like 80 years now or something yeah a long time she's nearly 100 isn't she um it's just the the absurdness of all the the pomp that just is ridiculous because they like they're just they're just she's the princess and he's just married her and then like they just hang out and they're fine but then she she becomes the queen and like literally he can't even leave the aeroplane first the guy stops him and goes no you, you're not allowed to go first now right <laughs> he literally cannot leave the plane until she's left so everything becomes ceremony basically yeah. For, but all yeah every waking hour right interesting I might go and give it a watch is it binge worthy do you think yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, yeah, as long as just yeah, and um, thingy from thingy from Third Rock from the Sun is really good as Winston Churchill as well. Which one from Third Rock from the Sun? The 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 older one. The dad. Ah, okay. From Third Rock from the Sun is Winston Churchill. Interesting. Coolio, right? I, I will give it a go at some point. We we're about to finish Mine Hunter, so yeah, it'd be a nice. Need something else. Nice, to complete. 90 degree from Mind Hunter, I yeah. imagine. Well, it'll probably calm us down so we can sleep afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Right, okay. So, Danny Strong, who's the guy that wrote the uh, screenplays for Hunger Games, Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2. My, in my opinion, the best ones. And Forrest Whitaker's The Butler. I don't know if you ever saw that. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the um, one where he works at the White House, isn't it? Yeah. He goes through like eight presidencies or something. Yeah. It's very good. Really good. And this guy's obviously a very talented screenwriter. I like his stuff. He's he's run won uh, Oscars for his work before. Interestingly, though, he is writing a script for Disney. And it's uh, Oliver Twist starring Ice Cube as Fagin. Are they going to do it like on the in LA or something? No idea whatsoever. That could be quite fun. It could be quite fun. Um, we don't know when it's coming or anything like that, but, uh, well, the original, it won like five Oscars, didn't it? Like the original Oliver Twist. Yeah. So it's, it's a really so good it's film. Got, yeah, it's it is. Fucking amazing. It was on over Christmas, actually. I watched it again. Um, so yeah, got plenty to live up to, but interesting concept. We'll see. What we're talking about Disney, actually, there was a bit of, um, contention on the, on the set of Aladdin, the new Aladdin movie. Um, because apparently they were using loads of extras that were uh, white people that had been blacked well, up, blacked up instead up. of yeah, instead of using um, extras from the Middle East of color which they had available to them. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, there's lo loads of shit flying around on the set there, and and sort of yeah, getting some bad press at the moment. When we know more about it, we'll we'll let you know. And this is is this on location or in the studio? On location. Right, that's ridiculous then. So they flew white people out somewhere. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, and it's quite a large number of um, quite a large number of extras as well. We're talking like 500 people. That's weird, isn't it? Very weird. Anywho, um, would you be interested in a synopsis for <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars movie? Yes. Would you? Because do you know why? Because I don't care about this film. You're not going to go and see it. However, 
Are you sure that you're not going to go and see it? Um, am I going to care? Well, just it's a little like in the face of a man who well, cares about this movie. Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. For those of you listening at home, no, he doesn't care at all. But um, the every Star Wars movie has a synopsis anyway. At the start, it's the True. first thing in the movie, <laughs> except for the, the Rogue, Star Wars yeah. Star, uh, Star Wars story ones. They, this one won't either, I suppose. But um, which is weird because they've always done it in the video games. Yeah. Even like they, they just, it's just a really good way of introducing a Star Wars story. True. You just go Star Wars, Shadow of the Empire. You expect it from every single, yeah. no matter what media it's on, you expect it from everything yeah. that is Star Wars, right? You know, it's the first thing that you saw in the first Star Wars movie. It should be the cornerstone. No other films do it, do they? It's no. weird, isn't it? Yeah, you know that he got uh, fined quite a lot for not showing director credits at the beginning of oh, the movie oh yeah but this is one of the first movies to just go straight into the film yeah you know? that's yeah. it and he was the director and now it's just fine he got now fined by the what was it the film actors yeah, he guild left or the, um, no the, the he was obviously in the director's guild direct, yeah that's DGA it. Yeah. director's guild of America probably is that's it so they fined him like I think it was 250,000 or something and the knock on effect to that was Spielberg was unable to direct Jedi really yeah why because um, George Lucas wasn't a member of the DGA anymore. Ah, I see. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, interestingly, um, the test screenings for Solo, a Star Wars, uh, a Star Wars, what's it called? A Star Wars story. Yeah. Are very positive. It's getting How really good little ready? reviews. It's not ready, is it? Well, they've got enough to give test screenings. Right, okay. So, I mean, that they are calling cast members back in to do little reshoots and things here and there, um, which is still going on now. Uh, it's such a horrible way to make films, isn't it? I know. I imagine know. Martin Scorsese doing that. Oof. Or uh, what's his name? The that thing did is... 2001 A Space Odyssey. What's his name? Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick calling people back in for reshoots. Just, like, p- the audience <laughs> didn't like him. Fuck the audience. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what, is, we I will reshoot this I scene. Imagine... But we've got to put everything, like every meticulous, tiny little thing back where it was. This is going to take days, <laughs> but we're doing it. That would be the Kubrick way, wouldn't it? Whereas bloody... No, Kubrick wouldn't do reshoots. He wouldn't, He would You're get right. it right in... You know what I mean. Anyway, go on. But I'm guessing, like, I'm guessing Nolan and uh, Spielberg don't have to put up with that. So they make those sort of films, but they probably get away with... They have carte blanche, I imagine. <laughs> this Spielberg definitely does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going to tell him no? Yeah, true. I shall take my production company elsewhere and fund this film out of my own pocket. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, right, look, synopsis for this movie. So, board the Millennium Falcon and journey to a galaxy far, far away in Solo, a Star Wars story. Such a shit title. I know it is, isn't it? Well, isn't it? An all new adventure with the most beloved scoundrel in the galaxy. Right, he's not. He's. Somebody else playing it. It's not Harrison Ford. <laughs> Through a series of daring es- escapades deep within the dark and dangerous criminal underworld, Han Solo meets his mighty future co pilot Chewbacca and encounters the notorious gambler Lando Calrissian in a journey that will set the course for one of the Star Wars saga's most unlikely heroes. That's it. Yeah. We knew that anyway. That's not a synopsis. That's fucking. That's just anyone <laughs> could have written. I could have written that. <laughs> this is true. I could have written something like that, and it yep. would have been ninety percent right, and Disney could have signed it off. Absolutely. But there we go. So um, I think I'm going to go and see it. I'm intrigued. Mate, you haven't seen the Last Jedi. At yeah, cinema. yeah, yeah. You're right, but. And you're like, oh, I want to go and see them ruin Star Wars. <laughs> They've already killed off Han Solo. Now they're going to kill him off at a young. They're they're, like, now they're going to kick it, <laughs> kick him while he's down. What is it? Flogging a dead horse. That's the one, aren't they? Like both ends. <laughs> like you're dead, and now we're going to ruin your backstory. <laughs> you're dead, now we're going to ruin your backstory. I am honestly intrigued. I but I really enjoyed, as you know, Rogue One. So, which is not a very good film. It's not like the best film in the world. It's not a very good start. It's not even the best Star Wars film, mate. No, no, it's not. Made a lot of money though. Yeah, proves that you can't really knock this franchise. Like, no matter what they do, any film that they put out, like all of the prequels, for instance, are awful, but they all made an absolute shed load of money. Yeah. So, uh, especially but when you're taking the... For affla- adjusted for inflation, it's still the first one that's made the most money. Is it? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Well, including like the toy sales and stuff. 
No, I think it's just start uh, because just ticket sales. Yeah. Cool. Well, don't forget it's been on at the cinema about three times by now as well. Yeah, it? true. In different guises. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll Where's my four K Blu-rays? Absolutely. <laughs> Right, uh, Danny, Danny Villeneuve. Danny Villeneuve. That's the one. It's been on uh, on media talking, talking about, about Dune. 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 Yeah. Dune. It's coming. Arrakis. He's quite excited about it. He likes a bit of a challenge, doesn't he, old this Danny Villeneuve? I, I love how he's going to try and fit this in 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Just, yeah. oh, Tomes. Every week, make a TV show of this. Rooms full of this book. And, yeah. A 90-minute movie coming. It won't be 90 minutes. It'll be two hours. Two and a half hours, I reckon. It's going to be... Well, how long was Blade Runner? Two hours and 48 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be a three-hour movie, this. I love that. I, don't, I like a really good, really long movie. You've still not seen Blade Runner, have you? No. Fucks. Just please prioritise it. Go and watch it. I've got to watch the first one again first. Really? I've, Chris, I'm, you're going to do this every week until I've moved house and settled <laughs> in my home. True. Just keep prodding you with a Blade Runner stick. Because I'm so far away from even considering watching like two movies a week at the moment. Fair enough. Anyway, look, um, Danny Villeneuve and and June. So he's basically, a statement from him says that most of the main ideas from Star Wars come out of June. So it's going to be a challenge to tackle this. Just because well, there's quite a lot of Star Wars kicking around at the moment and he's got to slot this into the market somewhere and be yeah. successful um, so the ambition is to do the Star Wars movie I never saw in a way it's Star Wars for adults yeah I'm looking forward to this yeah so am I he's a bloody talented filmmaker he, he did a ooh ooga ooga that's my very uh, my very camp alarm we've hit the snooze button so now we've got to wrap it up um, so what we're saying, I'm looking forward to it. He's very, yeah, it's gonna June. be brilliant. It's gonna be brilliant, right? Crack on Walking Dead season nine is coming with a different showrunner because he, he left. I don't know if you know. Um, no, what happened at the end of season eight? No idea, I'm, not, I'm, okay. I'm out of touch. Um, Queen, uh, now I'd like a synopsis for that, would you? Yeah, okay, <laughs> another time. Uh, Creed 2, don't Did care. You, why Genuine, not? Because I don't even go and watch Creed. No, Look, really, do you like um. Boxing Ivan movies, Drago. Really. Do you yeah. like the character Ivan yes, Drago? Yes, okay. I like Rocky IV. Then you should care about this one because they've cast a fucking huge, gigantic boxer called Florian <laughs> Florian Montanu as um, the son of Ivan Drago, which right. possibly means that Ivan Drago will turn up. Okay. So therefore, perk in your interest a little bit on Creed Two, which is arriving in late 2018, by the way. The first one's very good if you've not seen it. Go and watch it. Ken Watanabe has joined the Pikachu movie. Yeah. Which you're up for because it's got Ryan Reynolds doing the voice of Pikachu. And it's Pokemon. And it's Pokemon, of course. The Tick is coming back for season two with uh, Peter Sarah and Adam I haven't seen season one. You've got to go and watch it. It's very, very good. Really? Really, really good. J.J. Uh, Abrams is creating his first TV series since The Fringe. Which I don't know what that is. What, Fringe. Yeah, you never saw French. Oh, that's, I enjoyed he's, it. It's he's good. kind of responsible for Lost, though, isn't he? He sort of is. Yeah, yeah. to a degree. I I'll blame a lot of it on the writer, that. to be honest with you. Who Lindelof? But yeah, that's yeah, the one. he can fuck off as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you hate him because he ruined uh, Alien. Well, yeah, well, Ridley Scott ruined that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, this one's going to be a family-driven sci-fi drama um, about a girl whose parents are in some sort of a car crash. The mother being a scientist, and then the girl. Uh, the daughter finds herself in a strange new world facing like monstrous oppressive forces after rooting around through her mother's experiment, experiments, which you probably shouldn't do. Maze Runner, The Death Cure. Oh, yeah. Apparently That's it's out not, soon. Yeah, apparently it's not very good. Oh. That's a shame. It's getting really bad reviews. That's a shame. Apparently the one scene that is like breathtaking and steals the, the show. the one that had the accident on. The one that yeah. he had the accident on. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. in the trailer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Looks pretty impressive, but yeah. Sword in the Stone, Disney's live action remake has got a director. Who? Is it somebody really weird? It's Juan Carlos. How do you say his name? Fresnadillo? Fres Fresnadillo. Yeah. Do you know the guy? No. He's the guy that directed um, 28 Weeks Later. <laughs> Zombie Oh, yeah, flick. I like that film. Yeah, it's so do I. Film. Yeah. I enjoyed it as well, but 
yeah, Disney are doing that like left field director kind of yeah. selection thing, aren't they? But yeah, so that'll be interesting. Uh, on to trailers. Super Troopers 2. Did you see Super Troopers no. by any chance? It's um like a highway police comedy. Like quite star-studded cast. Just spoofy, like right, really okay. slapstick. So how the fuck did somebody decide to make chips? Oh, yeah. Well, this is this is these are the guys that are in cars, cars rather right, than okay. on on bikes. So, Super Troopers two, obviously the sequel. They find out that a Canadian town is actually part of the USA, so they send right. a bunch of state troopers up there to face off against some Mounties to to basically make sure that this state or this area is living in in uh, by yeah, American right. law. The, the, that premise alone that sounds brilliant. Sounds brilliant. Go and watch the trailer. It's on our Facebook page. It's released on April 20th. Tomb Raider, trailer number two. Does it look good? Uh, it's very much the same as the first trailer. Okay. But it's like a recut. <laughs> sort of. It shows a lot of like Alicia Vikander being very, very physical. You know what I mean? She's put herself through the paces for this film. Yeah. I'm quite looking forward to it. And Have you played the games, the new ones? No, you told me about this before. Yeah, so I've what's got it them called? both, so you ought to play them. Are they on PS4? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll grab those off you and have a look. So this is more kind of the style of the movie. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This you think is that's the what they're going for? Of, yeah. yeah. Um, I did notice like a lot of her kind of vocal sound effects in this trailer. A lot more of like the... Ooh, ah, yeah, they're like, like that in the, um, the, the games like that. Yeah. I thought she, well, she was like that in the original games quite a lot. So um, a lot of that's in this film, which I thought was quite funny. Um, there's a Daniel Radcliffe trailer for a film called The Beast of Burden, which looks bloody terrible, to be honest. <laughs> He's a drug mule um, using an aeroplane to get from one country to another, being oh. shot at and stuff. And his missus has been kidnapped. And yeah, it looks like a stage show brought to a, the screen. Oh, I saw a trailer for The Commuter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah, looks shit, doesn't it? It's got Fuck quite good yeah. reviews, though. Has it? Yeah. Just looks... Uh, Sorry, Robert. It does look bad. <laughs> yeah, it's um, taken on a train. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And the last one is Gus Van Sant's Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot, which is a book that's been adapted. Now, it's the eponymous autobiography of a cartoonist uh, who was like an all-round addict as well called John Callahan. Right. Have you ever heard of him? He did like loads of cartoons on uh, like racism and disability and stuff, and he was quite popular in America. Uh, it's been paid by Working Phoenix, and it's got Jonah Hill and Jack Black in it as well. Right. That it's sounds fun. One of these sort of like dark human aspect comedies. Um, the trailer <laughs> gets it. Oh, it had me laughing for all the wrong reasons, but yeah, it looks very good. It's on our Facebook page. Go and take a look. Cool. And that about wraps it up. Is that, you sure? Yeah. Nothing else to add? That's it. Oh, brilliant. So, yes, if you've got anything you want to ask us, folks, or, or talk to us about anything that we've spoken about in this show or any of the others, do write in and let us know. Find our Facebook page, Snoo with the Crew. You can tweet at us, at Snoo with the Crew. You can email us via, uh, well, any one of two or three emails, actually. Snoo with the Crew at gmail.com or podcast at snoonetwork.com or podcast at the snoonetwork.com. Either one is fine. Um, any other ways that people can contact us? That's it, really. We'll we'll do a, a bit more of a tidy wrap-up for our shows in the next couple of weeks. So you've got that to look forward to, you lucky buggers. Honourable mentions for Libsyn and Stitcher, of course. Yep. Who are uh, the assistant uh, DP and the DP on the new Doom movie. What bloody talented people they are. Right. Thank you very much for listening, folks. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you for another one next week. Bye. Goodbye. Jumanji's really good. <laughs> I might go and see it. Um, I might watch I it on my phone. Need to watch it <laughs> no?